Welcome to the Great Base Tennis Podcast. I'm Steve Smith, along with Yvonne Oseretz. Yvonne Oseretz. The episode 201, the Great Base Tennis Podcast. Yes, sir. Also referred to as the Not So Great <laughs> Tennis Podcast. So let's have a word from our sponsor before we start. Oh, we don't have a sponsor. <laughs> um, let's do this. Uh, Jim Poling. Sad, sad, sad. Veteran coach, 40 plus years as a college coach. Lost his life less, less than a week ago. Hiking. I had several people tell me what happened. Hiking, then a, a mountain biker lost control, ran into him, um, hit his head, and didn't make it. Didn't make it. Lost his life. Um, ironically, I was doing a workshop um, at North Carolina State and met a young player who was, was interested in going to West Point where Jim, that was the last position he held. Um, no, that's not true. He was he loves tennis so much after he retired, he ended up uh, being a volunteer assistant at Boise State. That's, that means you love tennis. You're, you retire and then you work doing the same job for free. Um, but um, why don't you read the release from the ITA? go through a few things well, of but, course but um yeah so anyway this young man was um ironically he started talking to me with his dad about west point and uh i knew that jim had retired just a year or two ago but knew that he'd be the man to call and say how to go how to go about that but go ahead uh june 13th 2024 the intercollegiate tennis association is saddened to learn of the sudden loss of jim poling a dedicated figure within the college tennis community who left a lasting legacy at numerous programs as a head coach. With over 40 years of leadership as a head coach, Poling's career, coaching career took him to Mississippi State, South Alabama, Tulsa, Rollins, and most recently, Army, where he would spend over half of his coaching career. Compiling over 500 career victories, including 306 while at West Point, Poling left Army as the winningest coach in program history, where he also educated, trained, and inspired cadets for nearly two decades, developing some of the brightest leaders of tomorrow. While at Army, Poling was recognized as a recipient of the Mike Kreswick, Kreswicki, I coach, apologize. Coach K, Duke coach. Oh, okay, okay. Award, his award for excellence in teaching character through sport. Apologize for mispronouncing the name. This award is presented each year to coaches and cadets who have shown outstanding commitment to the development of noble character through athletic participation and leadership. As a former student athlete himself, Poling was a three-time letter winner at Clemson and was named the team's most valuable player as a junior. Following graduation, Poling spent two years serving in the Army where he earned a Bronze Star for his service in Vietnam. Poling's legacy will be remembered by his wife, Marianne, his, math, his children, Matthew, Lillian, and Ca Carl, as well as the hundreds of student athletes he has mentored over the years. The ITA thanks him for his never wavering commitment to, the, to college tennis and the lasting memories he has helped create for countless student athletes. Oh, thank you. Um, Krzyzewski, that's my shot at Coach K. Krzyzewski, yeah, I butchered that bad. I apologize. No, no, no problem. Uh, Coach K, that's why they called him Coach K. <laughs> with uh he played at army and his coach was the late bobby knight and coach k uh was the duke basketball coach for many many years um, always wanted to go to his uh course on leadership for the longest time he was running in october i don't know if now he's retired if he still does that uh to digress a tangent uh, coach k says that the athletes today are bigger stronger faster nutrition and fitness and such but they're not as coordinated. So young juniors find a wall, throw a ball against a wall, learn to run, catch, and throw. Um, for me, in, in meeting uh, Jim, I was set the picture. I was teaching tennis, coaching tennis at HCC, Hillsborough Community College in Tampa, a large 28-court uh, complex. And it was nice. We had a cafeteria, a gym, a library. 12 clay, 16 hard. So for several years in a row, um, he was, as I said, coaching at Rollins. And 
uh, where he won a, won a national championship with. Um, but to get out of Division Two, say for example, a team you know Saint Le- Saint Leo, Barry Rollins, um, you could be ranked five in the country and not get the nationals. You know, so mm. anyway, the, the for several years, um, I would say four, the uh, regional playoff to get the nationals was held at HCC. So I would, would come in for better part of a week. And um, I had not met Jim at that time, but certainly I knew his name. And so he's just, we had a picnic table that was facing one of the courts and that's where people would come and we had some picnic tables in the shade. And I'd say, you know, there's a better place to sit. Well, the people really want to, would want to observe, they would sit on the two or three picnic tables we had up front. And, you know, he introduced himself and said, you know, he, he enjoyed watching uh, our practice. So then he called me up and he said, you know, I've been really thinking about it. And it was very flattering. He said, you know, what I was watching, you don't see anymore. And this goes back, this was in the 90s, it was a long time ago. So, I mean, we go through a little bit of his track record with his bio. And my recollection at that time that he's, uh, he owned the camp at Lawrenceville Prep right next to Princeton. And he owned the tennis camp. How he got involved with that was back in the days with Doug McCurdy. Um, he explained it to me, but I wouldn't again have a recollection for that. But he was a college coach that you know, ran a tennis camp as well. We tell people that the, the tennis team and the tennis camp should be one and the same. They should really be run the same. And I think now uh, Jim was in it for so long that when coaches from his starting point got it going, they made more money from their camp than they did from their salary. Um, but he was in tennis his whole life um, from Florida and he played at Clemson. I talked to Chuck Creasy today, who was a coach at Clemson starting in 1975. And um, so he, you know, almost 50 years, 49 years. Um, but Jim was a player. And I mean, Chuck right away said he was a part of the ACC championship team at Clemson. And certainly Chuck would know that because because he started coaching at Clemson. It was like, okay, I got to try to win ACC championships. But um, he was very intrigued and he just wanted to know you know, what our approach was based on, what our approach was based on with um, so many things. Um, He had retired, and as I mentioned, he's out in Boise teaching. But one thing, his children, um, you know, just doing a little bit of homework, um, all three, I'm not sure, but uh, they basically grew up at West Point. They grew up at West Point and they were, say, um, Rollins is in Orlando, Winter Park. And Chuck Creasy mentioned this today that, you know, it's not, it's not that easy to be a parent coach. And granted, like a Ben Shelton, you know, Ben Shelton first was in with his parents uh, at Georgia Tech at the University of Florida. What a great place to you know, see athletes training. And, um, but both of both, uh, t- at least two of his children, not all three, but uh, you know, Chuck was going through this with me. Uh, you know, five star recruits are, are stronger, and went on and um, coming out of at West Point is not the hotbed of tennis, but they became Division One tennis players, really good tennis players. Um, as you read, um, maybe, maybe no, I think that's in the bio where his wife. Uh, um, she was on a national championship team at Stanford. So obviously a, a tennis family with a lot of background. Uh, where, where to begin just to share a few things. Um, I was honored that the West Point tennis team, Jim brought them to Tampa, Florida, and they were with us for, you know, it's not just the week, it's the weekend, the week days and the weekend. So close to 10 days. Um, with that, um, I remember, and of course I know now, not necessarily at West Point, 
but um, it's fashionable for men not to shave. But a couple of the players didn't shave. I can't remember if it was th three or four. It was it um, painful to watch? As he said, um, "You're disrespecting Coach Smith. You didn't shave, and they had to dry shave in the parking lot. <laughs> no, no water. <laughs> um, but what a treat to have! The, and he loved it. Chuck Creasy was saying how Jim Pulling loved West Point. Chuck, Chuck used to." Uh, tried to go out of his way to take, now he's at the Citadel, uh, a military school, but he went out of his way to take his team to West Point. Um, having the students answer questions, um, special ops. I share this with junior students all the time. It was, a, and again, it's not like I spent a lot of time with Jim Poling, but um, what, what an amazing experience to have him come to our tennis school. The West Point tennis team comes to our tennis school. Now, they had a couple matches, uh, but they 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 practice and, and train at our facility. But special ops, so you know it would be obviously in Annapolis, the, the Naval Academy it would be the Navy SEALs. But whether it's the Green Beret, wh whatever it's called, with the um, West Point, the Army, um, you sign up, and it just says they can, you know, break bones. They can torture you. It's, it's signing up for um, this extra credit course. With uh, when I was with them uh, at McDill Air Force Base, we I you know got the coat and tie on and went with the troops and uh, the team, I should say, and you know spent spent the morning with a five star general. But just uh, so much, so much honor, so much respect. Um, with. Um, Carl Fisher, well, he's from, he's a world-class human being in his family. I used to tease his parents. They must use electric shock. Now, um, I'm going to guess that Carl was born in 84, same as another player in that, at that time, Ryder DeHart. And they were so loyal. Um, I did not coach Carl Fisher. I certainly spent a lot of time with him because I gave him the open door policy. I said, you can play her anytime you want. And when you read that next uh, piece on um, Jim Poling, you'll hear his name. He became an excellent tennis player, but just world-class human being and the way he was raised with, um, but it is, I, I know his brother played golf at West Point. And then two other, I think it's a family of six, but two of the youngest, the two youngest, or I get the numbers straight, but, um, Mabry and uh, Harrison spent a lot of time coaching them and they became very good tennis players but um, both went on to Auburn but um, I spent a lot of time with uh, talking to Jim Poling about Carl Fisher he just just raved now another player that um, was introduced to West Point through the Fisher family and therefore through Jim Poling was Chad Llewellyn and um, Chad Llewellyn, you know, I always wanted to, uh, say, did you, Jim, did you just tell me this or was it really, you know, he said our, he was our MVP all four years. Chad Llewellyn never made the lineup from a family of 10, never had a chance to really play sports, time, money, and how, how do you make it work for 10 kids? It's tough enough. We always tell families if they have two kids, it's uh, man to man coverage. If they have three kids and it's zone coverage, <laughs> zone coverage. <laughs> Lot, lots of variables. My, child, my son Connor would remember he was training. He was still a junior with Chad Llewellyn. You know, Chad Llewellyn, the only, once in a while he was wrong. You know, and I think also to, um, you know, the re religion, you know, the family prays together, stays together. But um, I can remember with Dave Fish, um, a guy by the name of Mac McNulty, Dave Fish called me up and said, and, you know, these, he's somebody from Chicago that I didn't work with that much, but I remember we got into all the Ivy League schools, all, you know, I've been with a lot of kids on April 1st, and, and I've been with kids that get rejected from every place they applied. But um, Fish called me up and he said, um, I think I'm going to have to cut Mac McNulty. And I said, you can't cut him. I said, he may not be a standout and be in your an everyday, every time player in your lineup, but I said, he will be your captain. 
you know, better yet, uh, he'll be your leader. I, I like to tell people coaches can uh, choose their captains, but they can't choose their leaders. With, um, but yeah, spring break, and then just to ask, and you know, I've worked, we've worked, I should say, I, I've worked over the years, been fortunate, Air Force, Annapolis, West Point, um, and a plebe. What does a freshman have to do? Uh, here's just a few things that come to mind. They have to run from class to class. Here are the books they have to run. And um, with there's no radio, there's no TV. Maybe that's changed, but uh, certainly cell phones and this and that. With I don't think they have. I don't think they're looking at their watch. They're going, "Hey, mom, uh, can you send me some cookies?" <laughs> so um, that, I have a tough time with that. Where that, that happened to me just just today. Someone looks at their watch and it, it's middle middle practice, and they're talking to their mom. Please put your watch in your bag. Uh, the plebes have to sit in the first third of the chair. Um, they'll do things like, okay, you got to go outside and cut the grass. It's really amazing. Like a Carl Fisher, I remember he was so fit. Goes to what they call boot camp and before before the school year starts. And, you know, the guy didn't have any weight to lose. We have, oh, I lost twenty pounds. Um, cut the grass with scissors, right? Yeah, yeah. They cut the you know you, they give you little plastic bags and go cut the grass, hands and knees and. Um, with over 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 the years i've had run camps with with navy seals and with marines and um but uh, with uh some things that uh um chuck greasy you know just love of the game was in it his whole life you know unlike myself i didn't get into tennis till i was really 19. um but with uh you know Coming out, I think it's Winter Park, Florida. But to play at Clemson, obviously. Um, you know, he I remember him calling me up about what my thoughts are were with uh um you know, where's um kids would go to play in college. Um with Chuck Reese said uh no enemies. Everybody everybody loved him, got along with everybody. Yeah, he came across where he's like everybody's buddy. Um, something that I think is very important if you can pull it off is uh, just to be kind. These are things that uh, Chuck Creasy mentioned. Um, he just never seemed to be upset. Never seemed to be upset. Um, why don't you read uh, a few things about his background? Of course, yeah. It's an extensive bio, it's an extensive bio here, um, many accolades. Um, it's quite long. Um, if you'd like to interject, please let me know, Steve. So yeah. if I have any uh, mispronouncing issue, mispronouncing of the names, please excuse me. Um, Jim Poling entered his 20th season at the helm of the Army West Point men's tennis program after arriving on the banks of the Hudson in the fall of 2002. Poling, six time named the Patriot League coach of the year boasted a 279 to 179 record at the academy and a 506 to 346 mark uh, through 34 years of coaching he became the program's all-time wins leader as head coach passing dr dave strom 176 wins on april 5th 2015. in 19 years at the academy polling has mentored six patriot league players of the year in arnie Albor Albor Nas, John Sabia, Carl Fisher, Asika Iso, uh, and Michael Wynn, as well as four Rookie of the Year honorees in Dolland Van Velzer, Gary Kushnirovich, Sam Lampman, and David Mitchell. He has taken the Black Knights to the conference championship match in 18 of 19 years, capturing the Patriot League title six times, 2005, 6, 11, 14, 16, and 17. Army has appeared in the Patriot League championship match 26 times in the 27 years of its history. Since the 2014 season, polling has led the Black Knights to seven consecutive winning seasons, two Patriot League titles, and two appearances at the NCAA tournament. 
After losing to Navy in the, na in the championship matchup of the 2014-15 season, Poling and the Black Knights topped the mids in 2016 to regain their title at the Patriot League Championships and book their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Capping off that season with an 18-9 record, the Black Knights finished the following season in similar fashion, winning their second consecutive PL title and national NCAA appearance and amassing a 21-10 record. The following two seasons, the Black Knights boasted a 17-12 record and a 15-14 record and two Patriot League runner-up finishes. The 2014 Black Knight squad reached the 20-win milestone for the first time since 2005, going 20-6 and six overall. Army earned the regular season Patriot League crown with a perfect 7-0 conference record and top Navy 4-3 in the star match. The Black Knights cruised through the conference tournament to find the midshipmen waiting in the title game. Army beat Navy yet again 4-1, giving Poling his fourth Patriot League tournament title as the team earned its sixth NCAA tournament appearance. Despite falling to Virginia in the NCAAs, Poling collected his fourth Patriot League Coach of the Year award. Army went 16-7 in 2013 for its second consecutive 16-win season, its highest back-to-back -back season win totals since 2004 at 19 and 2005 at 21. Included in those 16 victories was a 4-3 star match over Navy in the first ever Army-Navy tennis doubleheader as the Black Knights women also claimed a gold star. Army went 6-0 against Patriot League opponents to win the regular season title and number one seed in the conference tournament. Despite owning the top seed, Army's season was cut short by being upset by Navy 4-3 once again in a dramatic fashion. In 2012, Army's bid for the second consecutive conference championship came up short, falling to top seed Navy in the title match. The Black Knights ended the year with a 16-13 mark, which included an 11-3 record on their home courts and a notable win against service Army rival Air Force. Despite having a young team with only one senior on the roster, the Black Knights ended their four-year drought of, the, of a Patriot League title in 2011 by defeating Lay 4-2 um, to, to win the crown and the conference automatic NCAA championship berth. Army prevailed in all eight contests against Patriot League opponents, six in the regular season and two in tournament play. Army's 4-3 win over Navy in the annual star match marked the first time since 2004-2005 the Black Knights won back-to-back -back star matches, topping the mids in 2010 as well. Poling garnered Patriot League Coach of the Year accolades in 2011. In the four seasons leading up to 2011's championship, Army fell in the finals match to service academy rival Navy. In 2006, the Black Knights won the championship, defeating American 4-2 in the finals. During the 2005 season, the black, gold, and gray registered an Academy Best 21-5 mark. In 2004, Army tallied a 19-8 dual match record, including a 5-1 mark in conference play. The Black Knights were 15-5 in 2003, Poling's first season at the helm. Poling arrived at the Academy with 16 years of head coaching experience at the collegiate level, serving highly successful terms at Rollins, the University of Tulsa, the University of Southern Alabama, South Alabama, excuse me, and Mississippi State University. The Winter Park native continued a legacy of tennis excellence at Rollins, guiding the Tars to the NCAA tournament during each of his nine years at the helm. After directing Rollins to a 15-3 and record and a Division II national championship in 2001, Poling was named Wilson Intercollegiate Tennis Association Division II National Coach of the Year in the spring of 2002. Poling led the defending national champion TARS to a 21-4 mark and a top four national ranking throughout the entire regular season. He also garnered Sunshine State Conference Coach of the Year honors for the second straight season and third time in nine years and was named ITA South Region Coach of the Year for the second time in six years. Poling led the Tars to a trio of top three finishes in the NCAA tournament during his first three years at Rollins. His Tars club posted a 21-7 dual match record in 2000, excuse me, 1996 and reached the finals of the NCAAs. For his efforts, he was named the ITA South Region Coach of the Year for the first time. Poling guided the Tars to a pair of third-place NCAA finishes the previous two seasons. 
The veteran mentor continued to build on his last impressive accomplishments at Rollins. In addition to leading the Tars to a Division II national title in 2001, Poling presided over the National Rolex Doubles Championships, four All-Americans, the number two doubles team in the nation, the top-ranked player in the nation, the Conference Player of the Year, and a pair of Sunshine State Conference Team Championships during the time. In all, three of his teams captured Sunshine State Conference crowns during his tenure at Rollins as he authored an impressive 147-79 to dual match record. In 1970 graduate of Clemson University, Poling lettered three times on the Tigers' tennis squad. He was selected the team's most valuable player as a junior and helped Clemson to an Atlantic Coast Conference Championship the following year. He went on to earn a master's degree in exercise philosophy from the University of South Alabama in 1982. Following his graduation from Clemson, Poling served two years in the U.S. Army and was awarded the Bronze Star for service in Vietnam. He began his collegiate coaching career with a one-year stint as men's head coach at Mississippi State before moving to guide both the men's and women's tennis programs at Southern Alabama in 1980. Poling led the Jaguar men to three consecutive Sun Belt Conference titles and was twice named the league's coach of the year. During his three seasons at South Alabama, the Jaguars captured the National Independent Tournament and Poling was named the NIT Coach of the Year. He spent three years running the men's and women's tennis programs at Tulsa, earning Missouri Valley Coach of the Year honors in 1987 before moving to Rollins in September of 93. Poling is married to Marianne Ingrid Poling, a member of the national champion tennis team during her undergraduate days at Stanford University. He has three children, Matthew, Lillian, and Carl. Okay, thanks for reading that. Uh, Lehigh, it's a uh, patriot um, from upstate New York. Colgate is uh, Colgate University is part of the Patriot Conference. Um, Chuck was off by a year, I think, 1970 versus 1969. Um, here that someone's a veteran. Um, I grew up in a small town in upstate New York. My father was a veteran of World War II, and it's amazing all my friends, their fathers were veterans of World War II, and they never, I mean never, talked about the war. Um, but yeah, we can't forget our veterans. I mean, with... Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jim Poling. With um, family, condolences. Um, I think it's a nice touch, not everyone does it, but when you uh, touch as many lives as Jim Poling had, to, uh, where people can write in and uh, um, just share a story, share a comment, his gratitude for uh, him being part of his life, or their life. Here's an expression, uh, don't hear very often. If I was going to go to war, I'd pick that kid. Um, and I, I do think that, um, you know, Chuck Reese is saying, hey, going to visit West Point. Now, Chuck, he retired from Clemson, worked in the private sector. He was in, I think, Thailand for a short time. And then at the junior program in Washington, D.C. But he's been back at it, um, just, just, you know, we need, we need to go back to discipline. You don't necessarily have to, well, it has to be a military school, but, um, you know, what Chuck said about Jim Poling is common sense. With, when you mentioned uh, Army, Navy, uh, Chris Garner is a coach at Navy. He was a coach at Amherst. And I just got to, just talked to a parent a minute ago about college tennis. And I, I really tire of, Teenage boys going D1, 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 D1. D3 is a very high level. But before uh, Coach Garner at Navy went to um, um, to Navy, he was at Amherst College in Western Massachusetts. And I believe it was five times he was in the finals. Uh, I know I worked with his kids when they were young. At one point, uh, that spring break, um, Jim Bowling was there with his wife just remember her being very easy going, but their kids were really tiny at that time. And, uh, you know, being from upstate New York where West Point is, it's like, well, okay, that's not the best tennis environment. But to come back to that, uh, tennis players can come from, they do, they come from anywhere. They come from anywhere. With, uh, so when Jim was 
curious intellectual curiosity of you know the look what, what we did during practice um so coming back to chris garner so when army meets navy army beats navy in tennis navy is uh, obviously well coached as well i just would just know that from his record with uh um it's amazing the history of these coaches we just did a tribute for andy brandy when he passed away chris garner he played at georgia I'm going to guess it. We one of the last guys when Dan McGill was there and, and, uh, Andy Diaz was probably the assistant. And then he, uh, played the tour. So I only played one year of college tennis. So he was allowed to work at Ohio state. So he teamed up with Ty Tucker, um, with, uh, but Chris would be too young. Uh, he would have heard these names, but, uh, like say a Welby Van Horn, um, with, um but old school um chuck creasy said yeah jim was old school and then chuck and i talked about that old school i always say old school new school there is no school uh but something that's been repeated a thousand times over on these podcasts is we need to go back to the future and um so then talking to chuck you know reflect upon uh, Jim Poling in his position in tennis, you know, what, what would be some of the principles that he stood for? And, uh, um, you know, that, that'd be something that the governing body of tennis could do with the USTA is, you know, re, re interview his former players and say, okay, let's just come up with 10 principles. And I think what would happen is that you would find, okay, we're going to be able to uh, go to the net. We're going to play approach shots. There is this thing called the conventional approach volley. We are going to play serve and volley doubles. Um, but with each passing coach, um, that's one thing, you know, Chuck Reese asked me, um, you know, like anybody in a conversation, how's it going? And he said, we're just trying to carry the torch of tennis teachers from the past with uh, the great base. Um, so, you know, I was certainly flattered that Jim. Uh, was interested in what we were doing um, with, uh, you know, Welby Van Horn, balance, Vic Braden, science. We certainly could add more to, I mean, character to all of these coaches. Dennis Vandermeer, group dynamics, progressions, Harry Hopman, fitness, Bill Jacobson, match play analysis, stats. Peter Burwash, professionalism and service. Jim Lair, um, mental toughness. Jim Verdick, um, um, just team building. So for Jim Poling to sit on that picnic table and, um, you know, then observe what we were doing and call up and be intrigued and talk, talk about it. That was, um, you know, certainly someone runs a tennis camp and, um, I'm, I'm going to guess it certainly had some camps at West Point, but the, uh, the, I remember going to a hockey tournament two different years at Princeton. And we just, it was, it was hosted by Lawrenceville prep. I've never, I'd never seen so many tennis courts in one place with, um, anyway, with Jim Poling, uh, so it was such a sad accident and, uh, just, just retired and, uh, Life was cut short, but certainly he had a full life. Um, but really a shout out and a thank you to uh, Jim Poling and condolences to his family. I think one thing with um, our podcast, we're, we've turned the corner, we've had 200 um, fundraising. Uh, why don't you mention a few things about fundraising, Yvonne? I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this first. I don't want to cut you off, but we asked people to be part of our roster. And with what we're sharing, if people could give $10 a month, um, we're really not pushing the envelope, but what are your thoughts on that? Anything on fundraising? Uh, GreatBaseTennis.com. Um, there's a donate button. Again, we're not. Um, you can do, give a one-time one time donation. Uh, uh, we ask for you to join the roster. It's $10 a month. Um, we have... Um, Quite a few people who have already joined the roster and we greatly appreciate it the um 
the funds, the money, the donations that do that we do receive go directly into improving um, the quality and quantity of the content that we are are producing. And you know, I'm going to be the first to admit um, my mistake. I'm I'm here for for that reason, and I um, haven't been on top of that um, personally. You know, the, a lot going on behind the scenes. No excuse, but we're going to definitely here in the coming months, coming weeks, um, definitely be putting out a lot more content and hopefully continue putting out more content because that's what we're about. We want to help out um, the tennis world, tennis culture, and, and that's what we're going to do. No, thanks. More content. Um, yeah, I think we could uh, say better content. Um, there is a ton of content. We have a mountain of content. 15 years of Facebook posts, more than 15 years. We have over 200 podcasts now. Mm -hmm. We have five courses. I just found out today, I didn't know that, that you have to get an 80% on the test. It's optional, but each, I didn't know that, I forgot that. Maybe I knew it at one time. The rate of forgetting is scary. Um, but people could go back to the, um, but I just, I, I think that say, for example, with podcasts, uh, if you take sound bites from even, you know, Chuck Creasy, um, and talking to him today, I said, Chuck, we need to do round two, have another podcast, but take excerpts from, from the podcast. Um, but it, for me to sign off, I would think one thing is again, to come back to Jim Poling, um, a veteran coach. We recently had a veteran coach tell us that on a recruiting trip to Australia, they watched our course tennis intelligence applied. And it's about the same length as a flight to Australia. 25 hours and they said that they watched it on the way back and it's almost 20 years old now that course tennis intelligence applied and you know the brevity the clarity you know it could be done i mean it it, it could be it should be it will be um it, it it needs to be improved upon um i've been told by so many people well once people look at the quality of the film they're, they're going to move on to something else that uh that our content's not slick, but at the same time, it's um, really, it's rich in education. It's, it's, it's rich in educational merit. And it's not, excuse my name in third person, it's not Steve Smith's stuff. But I, I'd just like to close by saying that, uh, one, thank you for listening. We'll continue with the podcast, uh, like the ITA did in the write-up, is to thank Jim Poling for his lifetime in tennis, his contribution to mentoring so many young people, but just the example of him sitting on that picnic table and then him being intrigued by, you know, I, I don't see this anymore. You know, with, you know, kids slowing down and tossing balls to one another and peer teaching. And, um, but yeah, our goal is to try to improve tennis teaching, improve, you know, the ability for people to play the game. And we, are trying to carry the torch from tennis teachers from the past. We always tease and say, if someone tells you, well, the modern game, um, you know, and the kid's 27 years old and he said, well, he's professing the modern game and said, well, why don't you put your rackets in your bag, your shoulder bag and run away as fast as possible. Um, the, um, why don't you have the last word there, Yvonne, baby? Yeah, if I may, I can have a couple last words here. Um, like athletes are bigger, faster, stronger, but not as coordinated. Honor and respect. Zone coverage for more than two kids. If you have more than two kids, zone coverage. Coaches can choose their captains, but they can't choose their leaders. If I was going to go to war, I'd pick that kid. And tennis players come from anywhere. I think one thing, there was, there was a player that went to West Point and so many years have gone by I've been teaching tennis now 50 years and go back. It was, a, you know, how many years ago to meet, uh, Jim Poling, but it was, uh, for several months, but one a player who went to West point and contributed points on the scoreboard. Um, I can just remember telling coach, uh, Poling that, uh, you know, he's no Carl Fisher. He's no Chad Llewellyn. Those two guys were unbelievable. But I, I can remember also having a tennis parent who graduated from West Point, and I used to hit my hand, gets my head. I go, really? I mean, this this gentleman has done this, that, and the other thing, and 
And, um, but kids are emotional and sometimes it's like, well, and that's one thing Chuck Creasy said about Jim Pauling is common sense. You know, the man was just uh, an expert of common sense and, and, and Creasy has been in the game for a long time. So I'd love to just call him up and get his perspective. And it just always, he said, it always came across that his advice was just dripping in, in common sense. I like the line that uh, common sense is no longer common. But Podcast 201, Jim Poling, rest in peace. Listeners, thank you very much. Yvonne, thank you. Adios, Steve. amigos. Adios.